know, it's not like it used to be. <laughs> What the early settlers, the new arrivals, needed most desperately was a source of cash income to enable them to keep body and soul together whilst they cleared the bush, to enable them to get a start on the land. How that problem was solved must surely rank as one of the strangest stories to emerge from our pioneering history. This is it. It's a quite ordinary fungus and not very attractive, but almost incredibly, this fungus was to provide the source of cash income, and just at the right time, thanks to the business acumen of a Chinese trader whose name was Chu Chong. Chu Chong was one of hundreds of Chinese who came to New Zealand in the 1860s to look for gold. But Chu Chong was different. He spoke good English, which meant he could do business with both Chinese and Europeans setting out for the Otago gold fields. So instead of actually digging for gold himself, he set up shop in Dunedin and fitted out others. Eventually, gold on the Otago fields ran out and miners left town. Chong moved on too. He joined the drift north to the forest clearings of Taranaki. There, he saw the fungus on rotting tree stumps. Back home in China, that same fungus was a great delicacy. So Chu Chong started to buy it from the settlers at threepence a pound. For the cowcockies, this trade was a godsend. Their youngsters could collect the fungus while they got on with the business of dairy farming. Chu Chong tried his hand at that too, exporting their butter. By now, the Dunedin had pioneered refrigerated cargoes to London. But Chong sent his butter the traditional way, packed in kegs of brine. Everyone who tasted it found it revolting. So in 1887, Chu Chong built his own factory at Eltham. This meant he could keep an eye on every stage of production. Within two years, his butter was winning prizes just at the time when hatred for the Chinese in New Zealand was getting out of hand. Chu Chong was safe enough, though. He was a pillar of the local community. He'd married a Masterton woman and raised a family in Eltham. He was even something of a patriot. He called his works the Jubilee Factory in honor of the Queen. Before Chu Chong died in 1920, the locals returned the compliment. This illuminated address was signed by most of the cowcockies near Eltham. It was a rare moment of backslapping in a world that still offered the dairy farmer only drudgery and toil.